one's rolling. So we'll have you have a seat right there. You're welcome. Do you want me to put your left back over here? Yes. I'll be happy to do so. Welcome to class. So my name is Eunice Mathis. I'm a registered nurse and I will be your instructor for the next two days plus 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 plus. I never um, disown my family. You're now my family members. What's going to happen is as you progress throughout your careers you may have ad additional questions and my job is to serve as a, a resource and a mentor to you. So welcome to Florida Training Academy. We always want to start off by talking about safety. We have the one way in one way out. And since on the weekends we're like the first people here, um, more than likely I'm gonna keep the door locked until more people are in the actual location. Our restrooms are all the way down the hall. Um, as if you're going to exit the building, you will see uh, clear double doors and there's gonna be a hall to your left and that's where the restrooms are. I have coffee, water, crackers, oodles of noodles, there's no reason for you to pass out of my classes. <laughs> if you get hungry, just say something. And normally I provide lunch today. You know, we go that that lunch carrier was heavy, so I don't know what she got in there, but <laughs> <laughs> and so um and I'll talk about the pizza orders because I know not everybody eats meat, so we'll do that closer to eleven o'clock. And we usually try to have lunch here by noon. Um so thank you for choosing Florida Train Academy. And my questions are usually the same for everybody. Um, I want you to introduce yourself with your name and tell us the reason you're taking the course and maybe a fun fact. So a fun fact about me is that I have my hip surgery on next week that I put off for 11 years. Oh, yes, I'm that stubborn. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the doctor's like, do you want to see the x-ray? No. <laughs> I already know. So I'm really looking forward to um, having the new normal and quality of life. So. Um, that's it. I'm ready to start start afresh with a, a titanium hip. All right. <laughs> and so, would you please introduce yourself to the class? Tell me your name, um, the reason you're taking the class, and a fun fact. Awesome. Um, I'm Adrian Kelly. I'm a nurse. Um, I like to teach these courses. I'm one of my first students there. And a fun fact about me is to put myself through nursing school. I was a child photographer. Wonderful, wonderful. So what we do is we just not only teach CNAs, we also train nurses to conduct the CNA courses. And so she'll be here assisting today. All right. Please introduce yourself. Um, I'm Alondra. Um, the reason why I'm trying to get my CNA license back <laughs> is I was a CNA in Georgia, moved to Florida. So now I just want my Florida license because I let my Georgia one expire. Understood, understood. It's like, oh, I already know this stuff, but now you know this stuff. I made sure someone was like, um, in Walmart, she couldn't remember my name. She called me Nurse Enos. She's like, Nurse Enos. And I'm like, whatever you call me, as long as you know it, it's nice and professional. She was like, I have been a home health aide for decades. I don't want to be a CNA. Can I pass medicines in a hospital or in a nursing home? And so the new rule is that CNAs can pass medicines in nursing homes. Mm -hmm. I said CNAs. Mm -hmm. What was she? Nurse. Home, home health aid. And she was adamant about it. And I was like, let me tell you something. With all those years of experience, because the law is that you have had to have your CNA license for a year. If you make a minor mistake, you're going to jail. Mm -hmm. And she was like, oh, well, thank you for putting that into perspective. So I'm happy that you went ahead and you're going back to get those credentials mm -hmm. because now you can add those years of experience that you've already had with a new credential. And so as soon as I get information about the QMA course, I'll make sure I send it to you all. Yes. I'm waiting for um, ACA to um, send it to me. Is that the med pass one? Yes, where they I can have, pass meds. I need it. Yeah, I need it, sir. So, okay. so, so you're look at you already CNA <laughs> class, <laughs> QMA, <Right>. and um. <laughs> You know, because I, I trust senior or experienced CNAs passing medicines. My newbies, I want y'all to get a little bit tougher because those old people say no a whole bunch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, fun fact. Um, I'm not really fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, fun fact. I look like you. I got to have surgery on my foot, though. <laughs> Girl, we're going to be living together. Yeah, I'll just for a little bit. <laughs> we're getting there. <laughs> 
Facebook. Yes, that's important. I wish you a speedy recovery. It's fine that we're actually taking care of our health because mm -hmm. health is wealth, and we can only put it off mm -hmm. for so 11 long. Years. Eleven yeah. years, kids. So you know, when you, when you have those kids, mm -hmm. you, you can put stuff off for a long time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we're taking care of it now. What about you, my dear? Hi, y'all. I'm Regina. Um, I'm taking this course because I feel like it would be a good starting point into a nursing career. Um, fun fact about me, I ran track and field for eight years. That's awesome. 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 May I ask what school, what college? Fort Atlantic University. <gasps> that's, that's where I live! <laughs> <laughs> Not saying I have a favorite in the class, <laughs> but... <laughs> My name is Marlene. I've worked, as I said, here for 90 years. And then I turned 62. I'm like, my knees was really bad. I could hardly go. Decided to retire early. Mm -hmm. And I had two knee replacements. Feel it young again at 67. And I have a lot of care and love in me. I'm very compassionate about elderly people caring for people, and I think I can do it. So my license expired for the past five years. So I'm gonna do it again. And I'm, and I'm just fun to be around. She is, so she was 67, not no. at all, no. And so guess who my surgical companion is going to be? So you're not favorite, this me. <laughs> Over 20 years ago, yeah, when I was a brand new nurse, Marlene was was right I got there. I job somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and so she's the, got enough love for everyone. It's like, exactly. but, but this is what um, being in healthcare should be about. You can still run into people 10 and 20 years later, and as long as you're progressing and progressive. Because I've not worked in a hospital in a while because I have a kid and I don't like the schedules, but we have to look out for each other. And I see in a few years, are you interested in being a nurse? Or what's your ultimate goal? Yes, I start school in So our, our nursing baby right here in a few years is going to be somebody's charge nurse. Yes. And we never know when we're going to see each other again. So we want to make sure that we always leave that good impression. Mm -hmm. All right. So may I please have your information sheets? We've signed in. Where's the sign? Um, you're not on the sign-in sheet because you're an instructor candidate. Okay. Thank you so much. And Google is our friend. And, um, <laughs> so whenever you all were doing your online research, what made you choose us and not um, one of our competitors? Was it the schedule? The fact that it was on the weekends? Yeah. Just okay. get it over with. It's not a hard class. It is uh, two days. Tomorrow you're going to be tired, um, so don't try to eat anything too heavy because the, you know, the heavier the food is, the less likely you are to listen to me. You're going to start falling asleep. The first hour of the class is extremely boring because I have to go through all that orientation, the paperwork stuff. Mm -hmm. Were you all able to look at those orientation videos? Okay. Has anyone registered for their state exam? Okay. So if you feel comfortable after today's class and if you have the finances, Go home and register for your test because the sooner you register, the sooner you can be getting the test date. We're going to just review this process really quickly now. All right, so in your books, and these are your books to write in and on. Everybody, I just do want you to turn back to page two and pages three, pages two and three. And so the significance of this, and you'll probably never go back to this again, is that there's actually a table of contents. So if you're looking for something specific and you can't find it, just go back to pages two and three, so you'll be able to locate your materials in your book. 
As a nursing professor, I find that most of our students don't really like to use their table of content or their indexes, and they're always like, oh, I can't find something, I can't find something. I promise you, there's a directory somewhere in your book, either in the front or the back, all right? Turn to page four. All right, so this one says, welcome and congratulations on your decision to attend our certified nursing assistant exam preparation course. We specialize in preparing individuals for the written and clinical portions of the Florida CNA exam. The directors and staff of Florida Trained Academy have spent a tremendous amount of time preparing this course to facilitate you in passing the state examination. That key word is you because um, we have a lot of students and we are good teachers, but if you don't study, you're not gonna be successful. So we can only do so much. Good morning. Hi, are you Asia? Hi Asia, good morning. I tried to call you, come on in dear. You're welcome to have a seat right here. We just started, Asia. Uh, I called, I texted, Miss Asia wasn't responding to me. I love you. <laughs> Is this it? Yes, ma'am. I got to text you this morning. I thought it was 8.30. And I was at 8. I got one more. No problem. You can put your items here, baby. Thank you. got such a big bag. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, and so um, we're on page uh, four in your book. Four. And, uh huh, and that's your book to write in. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so uh, we just read the first paragraph and we're talking about your responsibility. We are accountable to each other. So you're gonna let me know the date that you have a test and I'm going to be able to respond to you. Um, you're gonna see in a few moments, I'll give you my cell phone number when we're off camera. And um, what I want you to do is to let me know when you have a test date. And then in response, I will usually say, congratulations, what questions do you have? And then I make a mental note that, oh my God, Regina's test date is in two weeks. And so I'll try to reach out to you again. But what I find is if you will communicate me before your test, the likelihood of you failing is pretty low because I get to answer all of your questions. When I say reach out to me, I mean via text message because if we're in class, my camera's on do not disturb or my phone's on do not disturb, okay? And then I do apologize for being behind you. Um, attendance, this is a two day class. Please attend both days, y'all. Um, next week, next month's gonna be a little wonky. We got a full, full house on some days, so um, just, just try to attend both days. Cell phones for all adults, please keep your cell phone on vibrate. If you need to answer your phone call, please step outside the door to do so. This is a smoke-free facility. Um, if you do need to take a, a, a pull on something, go to your car, but I need to prepare you for the real world. Most of your facilities are also smoke free. So we need to start thinking about ways to decrease our um, smoking right now. Physical or mental disabilities. We usually don't have these issues because our website is super specific. This is a two day accelerated course. If you need longer time, you need to go to blah, blah, blah. We put that on our website intentionally so that we have the right students who come to our classes who can learn skills in two days. Um, needing something repeated once or twice doesn't make you a slow learner, but we will not repeat it three times. That's why we have so many resources online so you all can keep studying. Completing the course successfully. As with almost everything, your success greatly depends upon your motivation and effort. Students who are on time, pay attention, ask questions, and participate as expected should do well. We sincerely hope you enjoy this course and gain valuable information for your future. Page five talks about that Google resource page. And I know there was one student who I did not give access to. So um, I will check that later. Um, hmm. I will make sure I check that later. The Google resource page is going to be how you can actually um, review practice questions, etc. But I also have our YouTube channel. Has anyone gone to our YouTube channel? Yeah, I'm going to get on your nerves because I'm going to keep posting videos and I usually try to make two videos per week. And um, if there is something that you don't understand, more than likely someone else doesn't understand it also. So instead of me just, you know, specifically spending one-on-one -on -one time with you, it's easier for me to create a video. And then whenever someone else has that question, I can forward that video to them. All right, page six. So how to contact your instructors. And so you do have my email address in your book if you'll go ahead and highlight it. Everyone should have a highlighter.
And then if you'll highlight the office phone number, and then whenever we're off, um, it's the first bullet beneath my name, it shows the office number. And then whenever we're off camera, I will give you my direct cell phone number. Okay, remember we're accountable to each other. You text me if you have a question before your test. Social media sites, we try to be everywhere. And we used to um, do a whole bunch of job referrals. At this point, if you can't find a job, it's because of you. Just gonna be honest with you. <laughs> your resume, it's not even about the fact that you don't have any experience because I have hospitals contacting me who are looking for caregivers who haven't even taken a um, CNA course. They just want you to have a CPR certification. If you have a CPR certification, they'll hire you full time and give you a sign on roles. So if you're interested in that particular information, when you walk into our office, there's a white table. I won't say the name of that facility um, because we're recording, but there is a whole um, newsletter there, like a flyer. Take a picture of the flyer, and they've been hiring our students right after their CPR classes. Okay, let's get to work. We need y'all, because you know, me and Marlene trying to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so page seven. Course orientation. Adrian, can I get you to read the paragraph um, beneath course orientation? Absolutely. To give you a better idea of what to expect and to assist you during your personal time, the following is a course outline of the skills we will perform each day. This course will focus on demonstrating the proper technique and skills. Self study and active participation are required in order for you to pass the State of Florida cert Certified Nursing Examination. Perfect, thank you. And so the first column going down is what we're going to cover today. The second column, excuse me, that third column where it says topic, review of practice questions, we usually will be leaving today about two o'clock. Everybody has homework. Your homework is a staple packet of questions that's on your table. So we review those questions first thing in the morning. Does everyone have access to their questions? I think it's your third packet over there, Asia. There we go. So when in doubt, circle two answer options, and then we can talk through so that you can, we can rationalize so you can pick the best answer. I don't know what questions are on the CNA examination, but what I do know is that our students are with them because we give you so many resources. You can literally just walk around your kitchen while you're cooking, listen to me talk about questions, okay? And, and how to answer them. Page eight. This, the testing agency for the state of Florida, as far as CNAs are involved, is called Prometric. And it doesn't matter where you take your test at. You can take it in Miami, Tallahassee, or Jacksonville. It's the same exact setup for the test. You're going to usually go into a small mom and pop business and establishment that could be storefront, like basements out of a mall. It's rare that you're going to go to a college to take your CNA test unless you went to a college for CNA training. And most of our adult learners are not going to invest that much time to be a CNA. And so they're going to take a quick course like what you're taking in the state of Florida. George is totally different. George, you got to sit there for 80 hours. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and so the fee for your test is how much? 155. 155. Go ahead and highlight that. Highlight their phone number and their website. And we have a whole video that tells you how to register for the state examination. If you can't find that video, let me know and I will send it to you directly via text. The sooner you can register for your test, the sooner you will be testing. Um, fingerprints can be done here. Let's say that you've worked somewhere recently, last six months, and they did a background screening on you, but let's say it was for child care. That's not acceptable because these fingerprints have to be specifically routed to the Florida Board of Nursing. And so if you've done something where you care for people, elderly people, maybe in a nursing home, then that background screening will work. You have a question? Yeah, so what about officer? <laughs> like, will that one work? When you say officer, like police oh, officer? Correctional. Correctional. Um, that usually is going to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, mm -hmm. so no. Oh, so like okay. literally, um, so that code under print scan, that ORI number, mm -hmm. if you all will go ahead and highlight that, that is like a routing number, kind of like the, the bank account number. That's the number that gets your background screening to the Board of Nursing. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So if we already have one, do we have to get another one from the 
when was the last time you had it done? Um, years ago. So they want one that's recent. They won't accept one from years ago, usually within six months. And then it had to be specifically um, a level two, which means it, a picture was included and it had to be routed to the Board of Nursing via that code. So like what we do at police substation, stuff like that, is not acceptable. So you know, you'll have to do it again. So if you don't pay for the test and you don't pay for your background screening, you, will be, you won't be able to get a test date. So it's two parts. Any questions there? How much is the background screening here, everybody? 87.50. And um, if you want to get that done, um, next week is going to be a rough week for me, but this weekend um, I can either come in early tomorrow or stay later tomorrow so we can get your fingerprinting done. Otherwise, it'll be like the following weekend. Florida Department of Health, the reason why that information is there is because the day you take your test, you know right then and there whether you pass or fail. The test consists of two parts. It has a clinical part, which includes skills, and a part that they consider written, but it's not written. It's multiple choice and it's on a computer. Whenever you pass both cards, you are a CNA, but you're a CNA without a license number. I need you to still put on your resume, comma CNA behind your name. I need you to start looking for jobs. They will usually interview you before you ever have your license. Three days usually after you've passed your test, we can go to this long website, we can pull up your license number. So you can update your resume before you ever receive your physical license. Like when I passed my nursing examination, <clears throat> our manager at the time, Feist, she never smiled. Never smiled. She did this. <laughs> and I was like, I passed? <laughs> That's how I knew I passed my NCLEX. Mm -hmm. Because she smirked. Out right away. She smirked, and what yes, she was she doing, the computer. what she was doing, was going back checking the system to mm -hmm. see if I had a license number. Mm -hmm. it took weeks, so it, it took yeah, it took like yeah, it took a long time back then. We always put graduate nurse, and then they then they phased out the GN, and mm -hmm. now look at them, they're bringing everything back again. Yes, Marlene. I was trying to go online and look for the test. Mm -hmm. I got confused. I don't know if it's the age or what, but like I had a license. And it expired. Mm -hmm. Do I? Unless you can find um, a last license, it's going to require you to produce transcripts that from a company that probably no longer exists. So you're going to still so, challenge the course. You're so am I going to get new, or do I need to? That's what I was confused about. Were you grandfathered in? Like, did you literally take a test? Because I think they only started testing like 15 years ago. How did you get your CNA license? No, I, I, I was tested. I went to a school. Okay, so what you'll do is you'll call Prometric because your situation is unique. You'll call them and let them know that you are lapsed, but that you no longer have transcripts because that school is not in existence. And then you'll see if they'll be like, okay, you can use lapse training, which I think is E5, but all of us have just used E3, which is challenging. Right. Because I've got all my paperwork, I've got my license, I've got everything. You may have all that, but they don't want transcripts. So I know. Be careful. Okay. Don't don't complicate your life. So I need to call them. Call them, yeah. Don't make it hard. They'll be like, oh yeah, you went to school 19 years ago? We want to see transcripts from 19 years ago. Okay. <laughs> and you know what's the best number to call? Um, so you've highlighted it. It's Prometric. It's up top. You see it there? Right. Yes, that's the best number to call. And of course, with every company right now, just expect to be on hold for about 10 minutes before okay. somebody answers. Okay. All right. And um, usually what they're going to want to know is like your social or your license number. Okay. Yes. All right. And so Florida Department of Health, you're going to know the day of whether or not you're a CNA. You can check this website for your actual license number before you ever receive your license. And then the part that says basic life support slash CPR classes. Um, I have misplaced my roster. Here it is. Alondra? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you did pay for the CNA course. Do you feel like, I'm sorry, the CPR course. Do you feel like having a long day? Because we have CPR the day at 3 o'clock. You'll be home by 5. Well, you'll be heading home around 5. Okay. Okay. All right, let me do. Okay. So um, if you are one of our students, we give you a discount for your basic life support course. You get like an hour between the two classes, so you're going to get something to eat, freshen up, etc. Okay. Um, 
you cannot, you gotta be very careful with what CPR courses you take, especially if you're trying to go into a hospital or a care area where there are gonna be multiple levels of caregivers. If you're just trying to be a sitter or a companion, you can take anybody's CPR course, most any company doesn't care. But if you're pre-med, pre-nursing, if you're gonna be working in a hospital, they're very specific. And the brand of CPR they want is usually American Heart Associations, basic life support. So the difference is when you think CPR, think individual. Think Asia inside of someone's house and that person goes into cardiac arrest, she's in that house doing everything until the team arrives. Mm -hmm. When the team arrives, the paramedics, whenever they arrive, they've actually taken basic life support and they all work as a team in order to um, resuscitate this person. So one's going to be doing compressions while the other one's giving breaths, while the other one's starting an IV, while someone else is um, using an AED. So CPR, individual. Basic life support, I have to learn how to work with a team of caregivers. And that's the course you'll be taking today at three. Okay. Awesome. Yes, ma'am. Do you have any more open seats for that class? Yes, ma'am. I certainly do. I love y'all. Let's get y'all all certified. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'm staying better. Yes, you are. You're one of the instructors. So. All the <laughs> And Marlene came, what, like two weeks ago, so Marlene got hers done, all right? So here we go, what to do after you submit your application to Prometric. In Asia, you didn't hear my disclaimer, the first hour of the class is extremely boring, because I gotta get through this, this part right here, okay? Um, what to do after you submit your application to Prometric. Alondra, would you please read that first paragraph? Check your bank account and three business days to make sure that the funds have been removed from your bank account. Your application will not be processed without the payment. Perfect, thank you. And then from there, um, Regina, would you read the next one? Yes, schedule a digital live scan fingerprints at Florida Training Academy. There are fingerprinting sites located in Jacksonville and nationally, so I can call you for that. Perfect, and so let's say you don't want to get your fingerprints done here because you live in another city, I can provide you with another resource, and that's how they usually schedule you at like the UPS stores. Okay. All right, Marlene, would you read the third one? One week after fingerprint and the background check has been complete, please contact from metric and the phone number inquiring about your testing date. You can keep calling every week until you have your exam date and location provided to you by a phone. And that sounds excessive, but I'm going to ask that you follow your money. Because when you call them, they're going to be dismissive. They're going to try to get you off the phone. You're in school. School's gonna start again in August. You're in college. You got a busy schedule. I need to know what my test date is. And so let's say, oh, well, in Jacksonville, we don't have an available test date until September the 1st. But what do you have in Gainesville? <laughs> <laughs> so if you have somebody on the phone, you can negotiate. You can try to get your test date changed. Otherwise, it is cemented. Whatever date they send you via email is the date you're stuck with. And if you are one minute late, actually, if you're on time, they'll shut the door on you. They shut the door on you. So your test does not start at 9 a.m. Your test starts at 8.30. You need to be in your test sites early. I got you, Asia. I see you. Look on your face. I see you. <laughs> they, they make you walk all your stuff up. It's a, it's a whole procedure. All right. And then um, last paragraph, Asia, would you read that one on the bottom of page 8? Do not wait for your admission letter to be emailed to you. Take up the phone and inquire about your exam date so that you can change the reschedule if necessary. The longer you wait to call, the less control you have over your test date. You may be charged additional fees. If you miss your exam appointment, all the fees are paid and forfeited. Okay, so we don't want to be giving the government free money. We're going to make sure we arrive early and that we are prepared. And then just as a note, um, Instructor Adrian, what I've just done is I've verified that all my students can read and that they can comprehend English. So you need to let your students, like, so in, within eight pages of the book, I already know who can read stop doing it. Page nine, everybody. <laughs> We're just going to skip through this. And anything that I don't read in this entirety, it'll be your responsibility to go back and read when you're home. Page 10 is where I need you at now. Page 10 is a recap of what we just said. First paragraph, I need you all to highlight 30 minutes. Remember, your test does not start at 9 a.m. You need to be there greeting the nurse at 8.30. Hello, my name is Eunice. I'm here to take my test and I'm excited. 
ma'am, you here too early. That's okay, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to email you a letter. It's called your admission letter. You have to print that. You know, I'm sure they'll let you show it on your phone. But when I was a nurse advisor, it was important because students would show up on days they weren't supposed to be there. So you need to make sure that, hey, I'm actually here on the date I'm supposed to be. And it gives you the location to the test site, etc. Identification required, two forms of ID. Um, preferably, one will have a picture. So your primary could be your passport, your driver's license, your military ID. Your secondary ID does not have to have any, um, any photo, and that could be like your um, debit card, believe it or not. Be careful taking your social security card and your birth certificate because they like to check for things that have expiration dates. Your birth certificate doesn't expire. And if you're married, those names won't match. If the name on your ID doesn't match the name that you have put in that system, what has happened to your money? Gone. Gone. It's gone. You forfeited it, so it must match. Does anyone not have two forms of ID? I will literally take my bank card, sign the back of the card, and take my driver's license. Okay. What to wear, the second half of page 10, go ahead and highlight that. You can put an extra uniform, um, well, not the uniforms, put an extra mask. We no longer have to wear a mask at the test site. So everybody, what must you wear when you take your test? Medical uniform, socks, athletic shoes. Because y'all know us Floridians, we only want to wear no socks. So yeah, you're gonna have less. It's the person who's wearing socks with sandals. We won't talk about them too much. But um, so what I have on now would be appropriate. Hair should be pulled back, low or no earrings. Everybody, let's do a fingernail check. Let me see those nails. <laughs> They're coming up. <laughs> What's the rule regarding female lifts? Because you're not the only one in here who's having an issue right now. If you can see your fingernail over the tips of your finger, your nails are too long. Yes, girl! Yes! <laughs> Cut those nails down. So why why are nails a problem for your patients? You might cut the skin. Cut the skin. You're on the um, labor and delivery floor, and you're taking care of a newborn. What's in those nails? Bacteria. Bacteria. And so they actually did research, and they were trying to figure out why these babies were getting sick, and if it wasn't because of the stuff. So back in the day, doctors used to wear ties. Mm -hmm. Nurses wore these hats. You know how many people have coughed on that stupid hat? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, the ties, they actually trace some of the germs from the surgical wounds post-operatively to the doctor's ties. When they leaned over, the tie was contaminating the wounds. And so now the nails are doing the same exact thing. You can't clean under them that well. And so you can actually be, in addition to cutting your patient's skin, mm -hmm. you can be infecting your patients, especially the vulnerable, vulnerable ones who are already uh, more susceptible to infections. Okay. So what we go do before our test, ladies? Cut my nails. <laughs> 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 the nails in here. No, no, no. But it's whenever you talk about uniform, talk That's about what I'm making notes. Mm -hmm. tattoos. Most of us have tattoos. Nursing school is going to require you to cover up your tattoos anyway. So if you have a whole sleeve, you might as well go ahead and buy the sleeve, um, the little white sleeve to cover up your tattoos. When you start having them around your neck and stuff, because we get all types of students in here and we're not trying to judge anybody, probably wear makeup on your neck the day of the test because your nurses are human. They're not supposed to be biased, but you have a 60-year-old nurse who is going to be evaluating you. And um, she may not be familiar with your look or your appearance, and she sees you before she ever hears you speak. So I want to make sure you're being presented in the right light. All right, page 12. The ones you've been a caregiver for a while, you know the ones with the tattoos and the nose rings, them the ones who on your team. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't gonna take no mess, my patient's gonna be good. All right, so page 12, clinical skills examination. Adrian, we're back to you, would you please read that? Yes, ma'am. Um, the computer will randomly select three skills for you to perform during your skills, clinical skills exam. Additional skills that will be tested will be the use of gloves and proper hand washing procedures. You will be allotted a minimum of 31 minutes up to a maximum of 41 minutes in order to perform your skills. At the completion of your examination, you and your partner will switch roles and they will perform their three skills. 
five skills total with gloves and hand washing. If a skill involves nudity, the role of the resident will be played by a medical mannequin. Yes, I do know how to spell mannequin. So anytime that you're talking about a nursing training mannequin, it doesn't have cues in it. If you're talking about a retail mannequin, that's when they have cues. I know y'all be questioning me. I'm just gonna let you know I know how to spell. All right, so written test, everybody. Alondra. The written test is taken on a computer and it consists of 60 multiple choice questions. To evaluate your overall knowledge, sorry, and skills and providing safe and complete care, the test has 50 score questions and 10 unscored items used for statistical, st uh, st <laughs> statistical, statistical analysis. analysis everything. You have 90 minutes to complete your test. All right, so let's backtrack everybody for your clinical test. How many minutes, max? 40 more than the max, so you all want to highlight this because as we progress during the next two days, you're going to be asking me questions and I'm going to refer you right back to your book and show you that you've already highlighted it. So for your clinical test, how many minutes, what to what? 31 to 41. 31 to 41. How many skills total, including hand washing and gloves? Five. Five skills. You do not get to pick your skills. And then 31 to 41. Written test, how many questions will appear on the computer? 60. 60, and they give you like a tutorial before your test ever starts. It'll show you that you can mark questions to go back and review them. If you mark a question, then go back and review it, because let's say you didn't answer it, you wanted to save it for later, make sure you go back and actually give an answer. Don't just leave anything incomplete. Um, you will not know the 10 unscored items from the 50 that have a weight. You answer those questions to the best of your ability, but they do add test questions there to see if they can be used on future tests. Okay. And then the audio test, we won't need to really address during this class, but um, Adrian, if you had a student who maybe had a, a, a language barrier, the audio test would be beneficial because it would, um, they'd have earphones where they can actually listen as the, um, and, and the words will be read to them on the screen. Page 13, advice to help you pass the written examination. The first is take the written exam seriously and study for the written as exam as well as the clinical test. Um, practice exam questions nightly and look up unfamiliar medical terms. And we're gonna start you doing that in the class today. So if you don't know something, we're gonna look it up. Do not change your answers. Always select the option that will be the safest for you and those in your care. And that is when it becomes complicated, especially if you have past medical experience. Because when Marlene and I were working together in the hospital, we would have eight patients. We're ripping and running. Eight patients doesn't seem like a lot, but it's eight patients on the cardiac unit. These patients are crashing. And we're doing things the fastest way, not necessarily the safest way. So if you take your old experiences into this um, test, you are not going to be successful. Book one. This is totally book. So pretend you only have one patient and you have enough time to provide perfect care. It is Every not real world. Piece of equipment is available to you next to perfect, perfect world. All right. So avoid answers of words such as always and never. Healthcare is individualized and we rarely take a one size fits all approach to patient care. Know the role of the nursing assistant. You are not the nurse. Notify the nurse in case of an emergency or if there are any changes in your patient's condition. So the patient who usually is, for lack of a better term, who gets on your nerves every night, who's always on that buzzer, who's always trying to get out of bed, he was quiet for a whole hour. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so you enter his room, Asia, and he's on the floor. What do you do? I would notify the nurse. Yes, that's the answer. All right, so we're we're uh, we're looking at him. He's still breathing. Do you nurse, or would you need the call bell? A look, both. So you can't leave. You cannot leave. And so let's talk about how you get help. Realistically, how would you get help? We have the slow way. The slow way is that handheld device. That's the slow way to get help. Usually, that's going to be a panic or emergency button or a lever that you can pull on the wall. In the bathroom, there's a cord that you can pull. When none of that works, your mouth. Your mouth. Mm -hmm. And what do you scream? Don't scream, nurse. Help. Help. Because anybody, any emergency. Help. Help. Because the nosy neighbor next door is going to peek out his room and be like, what's going on down there? He can't come in the room to yeah. help you, but he can go down that hall to get yes. a nurse. Don't assume that your test is geared toward a hospital. 
your gear, your test is geared toward anywhere where a patient or a resident could be. So that could be home care, that could be nursing home. How many CNAs are there at night in a nursing home and how many nurses are there? Like Three, four, maybe? Not four. Okay, so like, there's like two, there's going to be like yeah. five CNAs. So two nurses, five CNAs, and are you all on the same halls or you no, know, halls. One, per hall. one per hall? And here it is, you out there screaming nurse, and she's in room 32 and you're in room one. So you want to scream help, so that phlebotomist, that lab person, whoever's in-house, they can go down that hall to get the nurse. Okay, and that's also important why if you have phones, they're in phones with you. We can assume they have phones. As it is. If they have phones. If, so some of your facilities will give you all phones, but those are those fancy mm -hmm. facilities. And today, y'all working at Eunice's nursing home. <laughs> 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 all right, so we're going to call for help. The patient's still breathing, but they're on the floor. Now, this is our team, everybody. The whole team has arrived. We're going to do a team lift to get that person off the floor into the bed. What is the role, and Adrian, you gotta give them a chance to answer. What's the role of the CNA once that person's back in the bed? Check their vitals. Check their vitals. We can worry about comfort once we get them stable, okay? Mm -hmm. And so I may tell you to go and get some bandages, go get the towels while I'm there, doing whatever we need to. And now my job as the nurse is to make sure I notify the doctor, notify the family, get those x-rays, get the pain medicine. But your job is vital because um, we kind of like tag in and tag out. So it's like, okay, while you're ready to go get your stuff, I'm with the patient. While you're with the patient, I go run and call whoever I need to call. Documentation. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> we just had somebody who, what do we document? Because we didn't see it. No, we need to document the time. You better let them answer, nurse. Hey. <laughs> You document what you seen, right? What you saw. Yeah. Patient found on, on the, the floor. floor. You cannot document that the patient failed because now yeah. you're in trouble. They're like, the patient failed, you just watched them fall. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they were found on the floor and you notified the nurse and then we got them back to the bed, vital signs, such and such. But your documentation is just as important as that nurse's documentation because once you have a, even if you don't have a professional license, but you can also be called to court if there was a severe injury. So you wanna make sure you protect yourself and make sure that you always include that your nurse, that you notify your nurse. Don't lie and say you notified your nurse and you didn't notify her. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Learn how to prioritize care is the next one. And we just discussed this, taking the resident's vital signs, maybe more of a priority than giving someone a bath or keeping them comfortable during an emergency situation. Example, a recent fall. Taking the vital sign, take the vital signs first, and then once the resident is stable, you can give them a bath. The next one is don't forget to document. If you don't document your findings, you have no proof to support the care you provided. I need you to develop a study plan. Practice a few questions each night, do a few skills each night. That way when it's time for your test, this is like second nature. Um, if you have tests and anxiety, when you go to your test site, there's gonna be two nurses. There's supposed to be two nurses, but there's a nurse in charge. So lately in our area, those who've only had one nurse, they don't feel as if they were, um, let me backtrack. Previously, there was this little nurse who was really mean. And she failed a lot of people. Then somehow we started having two nurses, so that we would be balanced. And so if you saw something that she didn't see, we just can't fail a student for everything. Okay, we'll talk about what fails you. But we have two nurses giving their independent evaluation so that it is more fair. Lately, with only one nurse being the evaluator, our students have said that they feel as if the test was fair. Like the nurses actually want to see you succeeding. And so um, just keep that in mind when you take your test, okay? So two nurses was because of that little short lady who was telling everybody. <laughs> All right, so if you have tests and anxiety, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to put my brown face on top of that nurse's body. Be like, that's just Eunice. Good morning, my name is, I'm here to take care of you. And then the second thing is that we have relaxation techniques. What are some things you can do in order to calm yourself? Deep breathing. Deep breathing? Okay. Think positive. Don't always think negative. I'm gonna fail, I'm gonna fail. If you say it, you're going to fail. You're allowed to make mistakes when you take your test. I want everyone to say the word correction. 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 You just touched the sink while you're washing your hands. 
You don't freak out. You don't start crying. What do you say? Correction. Correction. The nurse is going to ask, what are you correcting? I touched the I sink. Touch the, sink. <laughs> the nurse saw what you just have to admit it, okay? They won't let you kill people. Killing people is transferring from bed to wheelchair. You never lock the brakes. You're done. No Pay again. No, no correction. <laughs> no correction there. Killing somebody is they're laying flat and you try to feed them. Mm. Okay, so common sense. But when people are nervous, they do things that they wouldn't normally do. Okay, so you don't have to be perfect to pass the CNA examination, but you do have to be prepared. Page 14 and 15. Why are you starting off on page 15? I need you to highlight that acronym. That's one of my secret sauces. Mm -hmm. All right, highlight that acronym for me. What does HCC stand for? Perfect, perfect. So after you knock on the door, I need you to address your HCC. Person says, come in. Hello, my name is Eunice. I'm your CNA today. I'm here to give you a bath. Is that okay? They're going to say yes. Before I begin, let me H, wash my hands. If you don't wash your hands and you start touching things, you may forget and touch that resident and you're going to make yourself fail your examination. In the real world, there are hand sanitizer stations on the outside of the door. So if this is the inside the patient's room and this is the hallway, we call it foaming in. So patients have to see you cleaning your hands as you're coming into their room. And then on the way out, we foam out. There is no foam to be used at the test site. It is only hand washing. And so someone was like, well, why would I wash my hands and then touch the curtain? I just contaminated my hands with the curtain. Newsflash, you're about to contaminate your hands with a whole human. <laughs> I, need, I need for you to pass your examination. Hand washing is your priority in your introduction. And then after that, you can touch whatever, the curtain and the call bell. And what so, you didn't said about the foaming in, mm -hmm. make sure it's really important that they, like in real world, see you doing the foaming as you're walking in. Yes. If you stay out the door and you do your foaming, people will accuse you of not washing your hands. Yes. But remember at the test, and now you can wash your hands. You gotta wash your hands. All right, mm -hmm. so everybody, um, where did we leave off at? Is it on you, Marlene? Is it your turn to read? Or is it, mm -hmm. would you please read one through eight for me, the introduction and greeting? Yes. Knock on the door in your room. Greet the resident by their name. No pet names, honey, sugar, baby. Identify yourself indicating your name and title. Hello, my name is blank and I'll be your CNA today. Explain why you are there and obtain the resident's permission before starting the skill. I am here to do your vital signs. May I do your vital signs now? Gina, may I pause you? Yes. On the role play. Okay. No, you can't do my vital signs. <laughs> she said, why? <laughs> why? So at the test site, everyone's going to say yes. Okay. But in the real world, you're going to enter Mr. Jenkins' room. Mm -hmm. And the nurses were loud last night. And somebody coded next door. And he heard buzzers and beeping and all the sleep. ER sounds or the no, hospital sounds. He says, no. You have the deer in the head like, look. Could I come back and do the next two? I don't know if you know me. So. What would you do? I love that. Marlene, what would you do if a person told you no? Would you accept the first no? And they're not cussing. They're not belligerent. I would. Nope. If, if he said um, no, I, I would try and talk to the person. There we go. I would try and say, um, you didn't get a good night's sleep. Um, will you call me in a little bit? So then I'd leave that person and go to the next So this is patient. what I recommend. Mm -hmm. While you're talking to them and communicating with them, find their why. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, because what's going to happen if he wants pain medications if the nurses in the med room drawing up those medications so i need for you to try a little bit harder because when people are sick they're not nice mm -hmm. and so it'd be something like this um good morning can i do your vital signs i say no no oh what's wrong miss regina i thought you were ready to get out of here are you ready to get out of here yeah. well you know the doctor's going to be coming and the first thing they're going to ask for are these vital signs mm -hmm. And your nurse, she can't give you any medicine if I don't get the vital signs. So if I can get them now, baby, if you ain't cussing me out, I'm going to keep on talking. <laughs> if, I, if I can get them now, I can 
can I can make sure I let this nurse know because now you're their friend. I can let the nurse know that you did not sleep well, they were really loud, and I'm gonna try to prevent that from happening tonight. Mm -hmm. So what did you just create between you and that patient? Trust and trust and bond. Trust and a bond. But if you just say, okay, <laughs> you ain't gonna never get anything done because old people like taking baths. Let me stop saying old people. Some of your patients <laughs> don't like to sick people. <laughs> they don't they don't like to be bothered. Okay, and so guess what we do every hour? We bother them. <laughs> but that's what they're there for. They're there for us to monitor them to make sure that they get better. God forbid if something happens and we didn't monitor them, well, then we're going to be at fault. Mm -hmm. What I used to do when I was a CNA would, like, at, if they argued and argued, just look back, add you to the end of my rotation and see you last. <laughs> so you get a few more minutes of sleep? Yes, because you depend on where you work. You can have five patients, eight patients, 20 patients, 20 patients, 12 patients. And that gives them a feeling of control, which is sometimes what it is. Mm -hmm. They feel like they don't have any control. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of, um, what's, the, what's the word I'm trying to look for? When you're dealing with adults and it's their emotional, you have to take all of that into consideration. Mm -hmm. So um, you want to provide holistic care. If they're just not a person who has a disorder, they're for, it's a whole patient. So when your patients are bed bound, you take care of the whole patient, including their hair. You know, I'm trying to look at you, and I know that you may have diabetes, you may have sickle cell, but you are not your disease, okay? All right, so would you please continue? We did number four, so we're on number five. Wash your hands before touching the resident. This is a failing point. Pull shut the privacy curtain or door. Apply gloves if they are needed. Perform a skill. Okay, we're only gonna be talking for another 10 minutes. Would you all please highlight number five, wash your hands. That's a failing point. You into that room, you introduce yourself, wash your hands. All right, page 16, everybody. As you are performing your skills, your nurses are going to be evaluating you on indirect care measures. So you can indirectly cause um, a health problem or a safety concern for a patient, such as, let's say we have a patient who has C. diff, and that's a you won't know it. We won't be able to confirm it without a specimen that's sent to lab which takes three to five days sometimes. But you're gonna smell it, and you're the caregiver, you're the CNA. When you go into the room and you wipe this person and they have diarrhea, and they have the worst smelling mm -hmm. bowel movement that you've ever smelled in your life, you automatically know something's not right. But they're not on isolation yet, mm -hmm. because we don't have a confirmation that they have this, bur this bug in their stomach. You're not a good caregiver, so you're touching the bed. You're fine, dear. You're touching the bed while you're cleaning them. You're touching the bed while you're cleaning them. And then you go into the next person's room. Remember, that person's not on isolation yet. And you can't actually put it down on until it's confirmed. Mm -hmm. And so now with maybe pandemic and COVID, you know, maybe we can do something um, a little bit different now where if we think about it or I want you to protect yourself. So when they say what you can't do, who's in that room with you when you clean the butt? <laughs> so if you're the only one in there, put the gown on. Yeah, put the gown on. But that person had a foul smelling stool. This patient is on chemotherapy, mm -hmm. and I go into her room and I touch her bed. What did I just transfer? The germs from yeah. his process of yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you want to be really mindful that your uniform should not touch anything. So you cannot be touching the bedding. When we're in the rooms in a few moments and we're, um, one of the first skills we do is pretty simple. It's like um, pulse and respiration. That's different for the test. At the test, nurses may be sitting next to the bed. She's touching the bed. You touch the bed too. But when we're talking about changing of linens and things of that nature, if you are touching the bed, I have you start all over again. For the classroom, it's a minor inconvenience. We laugh. At the test site, what is that nurse going to do? Yes. She's going to mark you off, mm -hmm. okay? And in the real world, you just pass the bacteria to somebody who didn't need it. All right, so the first um, understanding for caution and infection control measures, it says basically treat all persons as if they or their bodily fluids may be contaminated. Hand washing is the single most important procedure to prevent the spread of bacteria and germs. You must begin and end each skill with clean hands and must wash your hands after gloves are removed. 
clear as mud. I think so. Provide resident comfort. <laughs> Provide. Her, I hear we gonna see you. I hear this pass it. Much spike to you. Provide resident comfort. What is the last sense that leaves? The last sense that leaves. So let's talk about our senses. Hear. What is it? Your hearing. Your hearing. So when we're providing for the resident's comfort and we have a patient who is nonverbal, how would you know of somebody who can't speak or someone who's in a coma? How would you know if they're in pain? By the way they're looking. Grimaces? Yeah, just yes. see if they look comfortable. You can look in their face. Yes. What's going to happen if they have a vital sign monitor? What will happen with the blood pressure, the heart rate? It's going to drop or go. Usually, usually not drop. It's going to be the opposite. It's going to go up. So you can tell when your patient's uncomfortable, even though they can't verbalize it. And so when we're promoting a resident's comfort, we're only thinking about people who can tell us, oh, that doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm. You have patients who can't talk to you, and you still have to take care of them. How does a CNA promote comfort without pain medication? She looked down, not in the book. Mm -mm, got to pull this one forward. You got to bring it from the back of the brain to the front of the brain. How do you help provide comfort without giving pain medicines? You make sure the patient is clean, dry, the bed's not wrinkled, the clothes is not wrinkled. Position. 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 Yeah. Yes. Elevation. Yes. With a doctor's order, what type of compresses could you apply to an area? You can put like a warm compress or a cold compress because sometimes we'll have those orders mm -hmm. um, depending on what their pain type is. And so those are things that you want to be mindful of. And if you have to provide range of motion to somebody who is contracted, their joints are fixed. And the reason why they're fixed is because no one moved it. Because every time they tried to move it, what did the patient say? Mm -hmm. Ouch. Mm -hmm. And so now they're stuck like this. Mm -hmm. I need you to try to work, put a pillow there. Because eventually it will release if you work with it. And it may take a week. It may take a week. The hand, when someone's bed bound, their hand's going to curve in. What can you put in the hand to stop it from curving in? A ball, yeah. a pair of socks. Okay, mm -hmm. a rolled washcloth. Yeah. And remember, at first it's going to be really tight. Oh, yeah. And then you put a bigger, a bigger, a bigger, a bigger roll. And then once we get those fingers kind of open, maybe we can put a brace. Y'all are like, why is the nurse doing this? Yeah. How many nurses was there in that nursing home? Two. To about 30 patients. That nurse doesn't know what's going on, but who does? The CNA. Oh, CNA. Yeah. I love y'all. We need y'all. Yes, ma'am. I have, I do home care, and I have my patient now, but now she has the same problem in her leg. Mm -hmm. She has arthritis, and um, her joints get tighter, so now we're doing like home therapy yeah. where we kind of loosen up the, the joints in her leg and we'll put like pain cream on it. Very good. And so for a CNA, unless you've been, um, well, she's doing something totally different because she's not a CNA yet. And technically, um, a licensed caregiver can give medications. And so once you're a CNA or on your test, as of right now, you cannot give medications. So for your test, forget everything you're doing right now in the home with that ointment, because that ointment would be considered a medication. It's um, Epsom salt, but they have Epsom salt cream. Mm -hmm. In your ointment. For your test, what you're doing for her is what she needs, but for your test, a CNA cannot give medication. Even if we have a med test? Mm -hmm. For the CNA exam, a CNA cannot give medication. Got, got, don't ask, don't say, don't put down their I gave such and such for this <laughs> test because uh, for the CNA exam, you cannot do medication. Okay. All right, so continuing on, we talked about promoting rights. Uh, we promoted comfort, promote residents' rights. Your residents have a right to refuse. We try to give them options so they feel like they have more control. Um, so you just are not going to treat them as if they're a kid. You want to uh, allow them to participate in their care. For example, what color shirt do you want to wear today? What do you want to eat? And then for promoting resident safety, if you'll highlight those last two sentences, which states, never leave a resident who is at risk of injury alone. 
Stay with the resident and call for help while you are with the resident. The last two sentences at the bottom. And I know those tummies are growling, so we're almost done with this orientation. <laughs> All right, so page 17 at the very bottom, would everyone highlight HCCD? And then Marlene, this would be yours to read, but would you tell me what the D stands for? Documentation. If you don't document it, you have no proof that it was done. And so when you're in your room, and we're gonna talk about my little sandwich technique that I use, because people who know skills fail this test left and right. So I, it's like, oh yeah, I've been a CNA for 20 years. You're gonna to go to that test site and you're not gonna be successful because all you know are hospital level skills. I have to teach you a full process here and I call that my burger. You'll learn the burger process in a few moments. At the very end of your burger, the bottom bun doesn't have to be in any order. I have it in the book written as HCCD. But technically, if you're near the person, you can do C first, you can give them a call bell. Then as you get closer to the bathroom, you can open up the curtain. Um, if your hands are clean, you can document. If you had gloves on your hands, what would you have to do before you document? Hands. Take off the gloves and wash your hands, okay? And so we'll go through all of these processes. Um, if not today, we'll make sure we get through them all tomorrow so it makes sense. Marlene, would you please read the um, exiting procedure one through six? Leaving your clean and tidy, neatly contained, place the call bell in the resident hands and ask if there is anything else that is needed. Open the privacy curtain, discard gloves if applicable, and then wash your hands. Document your finding and the care provide if you have not done so. Perform a five second scan of the room, ensuring that all have been done and that the patient right so safety confirmed and privacy had been maintained before you exit the room. Thank you so much. So everybody, when you look at this um, little poster board I have, this is a sample skills card. Your skills card during the test is just going to be a regular sheet of paper. And it's going to have your three skills on them. Who picks out the skills, the nurse or the computer? The computer. The computer, okay? You treat every skill as if it's a new patient. Can your residents or your patients have sex in their rooms? No. They can? Yes, they can. Yes. They're always good. <laughs> <laughs> but do you want to see it? No. no. Now, if they are on an Alzheimer's unit, or if it's unconsensual or non-consensual sex, it's different. But yes, they can have sex. Okay, so, but we don't want to see it. So what do we do first? No. We knock. Okay, so during your test, the first thing you do is you no. knock. And then you're going to wait for the person to say, come in. During your test, they did not refuse care. So it's going to be, hello, my name is Eunice. I am your CNA today, and I'm here to take your pulse. Is that okay? What What is the required answer? Yes. yes. If you refuse to have a skill performed upon you, you fail the test. So you're not performing your skills on a resident in the facility. You're performing your, your skills on other testers, okay? HCC stands for what? Curtain call. Okay, so they told me yes, that I can go, um, that I can perform the skill. So I'm going to immediately say, let me go wash my hands. And I'll show you how to wash hands in a few moments. After that, you can touch anything in the room. What do you do to the curtain? Do you open it or close it when you're going in, you close it to provide privacy. So do you really need to provide privacy when you're taking a poll? No, but I'm teaching you the same process. This is going to be so routine until it doesn't matter how nervous you are on the day of your test. You're going to knock on the door, you're going to greet, you're going to say whatever the first skill is, you're going to wash your hands, and you're going to close the curtain. What's that handheld device called? You can call it whatever you want. 
called a call bell because I'm old. Oh. <laughs> call button. Call button is a handheld, a signal device. When you're in the room with the patient, they don't need it. So you're going to remove it out of their hands. Now we're going to actually do the skill. This is not about teaching you the skill right now. It's about teaching you the process. If you miscount while you're taking the pulse, you're on one arm. Guess who's on the other arm? The nurse. nurse. Oh, because oh, this is a test. Oh. Yes, so you're on one arm, the nurse is on the other arm, and you all are counting the pulse simultaneously. You lose count. You don't freak out. What do you say? Correction. Correction. The nurse will say, what are you correcting? That I lost count. count. Can we start all over again? Now, they only will let you start all over again twice. If you lose count like three, four times, <laughs> you did not practice a few skills per day. You want to make sure you know what you're doing. All right, so I've now finished. I've gotten the pulse. I have it in my head. How do I end my skill? What does HCCD stand for? Head If you don't wear gloves for the pulse skill, why is that? Talk about sensation. Yeah. So if you have gloves on, you're going to, you can't feel it. So um, this is not somebody who's on isolation. It's not a COVID ward. You won't have gloves on during the test for the pulse skill. So that means you can immediately pick up your pen and document. The D is done. Remember at the end, the order of the HCCD doesn't matter. Just get it done. All right, so what can I do next? I've documented the pulse. What do I do now? She looked down, I love it. What do I do now? <laughs> I can go wash my hands, okay, hands are clean. What do I do now? Open the curtain. I can open up the curtain. Doesn't have to be perfect, you all just gotta get done. What's the last thing I need to do? Safety, safety, call safety. Button. Call button, say it, call say button. it. Say it with confidence, young lady. What's the last thing I need to make sure I do? Call give, button. give the patient a call button. Be proactive. When you give them the call button, what question do you ask them? Is there anything else I can do? Because if you don't, as soon as you walk out the door, mm -hmm. bam! <laughs> like, ma'am, I was just in your room. But it was my fault. It wasn't your fault. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm going to be like, um, is there anything else I can get for you? In the real world, I am honest with my patients. I have a new admission coming. I won't be back here for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Can I get you everything you need now? And usually your patients will respect that, and they won't call you for a while because you took care of everything before you left the room. Stand at that door. The nurse is looking at you. You're looking at the nurse. Before you say done, I want you to call out HCCD. What does it stand for? And washing. How many times do you wash your hands per skill? Twice. Twice. What's next? H C call button. Where should it be at the end of your skill? In the patient's hand, not next to them, directly in their hand. Okay. What's the other C? The curtain. Curtain. How should that be at the end of the skill? Open. 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 Don't leave them claustrophobic. The D. Documentation. Documentation. The nurse at the test site will have no idea what you are talking about. That is our secret sauce. Only our students use that. You're saying that in your brain. And when I talk to students and I say, well, what, what did you use during your test to help you pass? And they all say the HCCD because you all move really fast and you want to go from one skill to the other. This is going to make you stop, process, and think. And How many skills did you have? How do you start your second skill? Nothing. Knock. <laughs> you treat every skill as if it is a new resident. Whenever you get to the skill bed bath, you will not be giving your partner a bed bath. <laughs> Who will be your partner? The mannequin. The mannequin. Who answers on behalf of the mannequin? The nurse. The nurse. So anything that you would say to somebody, you're going to be talking to the mannequin, but the nurse will be responding on behalf of the mannequin. And everybody, we have been here for a whole hour. You all are welcome to take your first break, and then after this, we get into our skills. So any questions about the orientation part of the class? Mm -hmm. All right, let's get her done. Turn off this camera. Great job, everybody.